Hello, Agora friends. I am Mrs. C. Stefano, and I'm so excited that you decided to join me for our story today. I work at our high school, but before I started teaching teachers in professional development, I was actually an art teacher. And one of my very best favorite things to do was to read stories, especially stories that taught me about someone else or another land, another culture, or an other experience that I didn't get to have. And that's why I'm so excited to read our story today, which is all about Acacian New Year's tradition. So today, hopefully together, we're going to learn about a tradition that's a little bit different than our own. Lots of different people across the world celebrate holidays and exciting events in ways that I can only imagine. Today's story is called Mademoiselle Grandois. It is a Cajun New Year's Eve tale, and it's written by Jeanette Downing and illustrated by Heather Stanley. Shall we read it together? Let's. In the Cajun prairie, where the tall grasses grow, there is a legend that all the children know. Across the bayous and the swamps in every Acadian home, one night each year an old lady will roam. It started long ago, or so our fathers tell, one young maiden and one evil spell. Come closer now as I tell you this tale, for it happens every New Year's Eve without fail. Papayan had a daughter he loved so dear. He called for her suitors to come far and near. She was generous, her beauty known across the lands. Mademoiselle Grandois, she was called, for her lovely long fingers and hands. Young men stood in lines like rows of sugar cane. For acres and acres they chanted her name. Each young suitor with stars in his eyes hoped Mademoiselle would be his heart's prize. They stood in line for hours and hours, her hands they wanted to kiss. But across Acadiana, something was amiss. Like the winds across the prairie, the news took flight. Young, jealous girls gathered in the town that night. They planned to fay Dodo a party, but the story gets worse. They concocted a grigri, a spell, a curse. Mademoiselle Grandois, more radiant than all, danced with every suitor who came to the ball. Her stockings were silk, her dress was lace, her feet in beaded shoes glided the floor with grace. To accordions and fiddles, she danced every tune. She smiled and laughed, making young suitors swoon. And at the end of the night, when the party was through, Papillon and Mademoiselle bid their hosts adieu. Back at home, in her moss-filled bed, she fell into a deep sleep as she lay down her head. In the morning, as the sun began to rise, Mademoiselle Grandois opened her eyes. Her lovely long fingers were covered in warts, and her hands were ugly and knobby in parts. Her skin was scaly like a crawfish sack, and she had bumps on her face and a hump on her back. Her nose was like the beak of a crane, and her hair looked like moss from her bed after rain. She ran to the attic, never to be seen again, and to this day, that is where she has been. She never got married or had children like she dreamed. The Grigri worked just as the jealous girls had schemed. But justice is swift, if nothing at all. The jealous girls turned green right after the ball. Into the swamps they fled, such a wolfish, horrid sight. And if you listen closely, you'll hear them howl at night. 
Now I tell it to you, as it was told to me. Mademoiselle Grandois still loves children, you see. On the anniversary of that dance, Papillon makes ready to honor his daughter with a New Year's Eve party. Like the stockings and shoes she wore to the ball, if you put yours out that night, she will fill them all with oranges and gifts and sweets to delight. Mademoiselle Grandois blesses all good children each year on that one and only night. So to my readers, what did you think of our Cajun New Year's Eve tale? Is this how you're going to be celebrating your New Year's Eve? Do you put shoes out like they do in the story? Or maybe like they do in Spain where they have a tradition to eat 12 grapes on the stroke of midnight. Or perhaps you like to stay up and watch the ball drop like we do in many cultures in America. Or maybe you're like Mrs. Stefano, and you like to go to bed nice and early so you can wake up for some delicious food on New Year's Day. Let us know how you celebrate your New Year's in your family. Thank you so much for joining us on our story tonight. We hope you enjoyed it and that you have a wonderful New Year's. Thank you.